Good day, good people! Welcome back to Barely Smart! Ah yes, the unification of all the Slavic countries! Now first of all, this wasn't my idea, as if you couldn't tell by many other videos already made on this topic, rather poorly if I may. No, this idea is called Pan-Slavism, a movement, or better yet, a political ideology popularized in the 19th century, whose main goal was to unite all the Slavic people. We've actually seen this movement in action during the 20th century, in the form of Yugoslavia and Czechoslovakia. Slovakia. Sure, they both failed, but at least what remained were the pan-Slavic flags. People may think this represents brotherhood of Slavic people, but I honestly think they were just too lazy to come up with their own ideas. Much like this channel. This scenario is absurd today, but I love adding big numbers, so you're gonna have to endure the next 10 minutes with me. Subscribe, hit the bell thingy, and let's go! In order for this to happen, 13 countries have to lose their independence. Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, Poland, Czechia, Slovakia, Slovenia, Croatia, Serbia, Bosnia, Montenegro, North Macedonia and Bulgaria. All of these countries together take up a lot of space. Thanks to... you guessed it. 18.7 million square kilometers to be exact, making it the new largest country in the world by far bigger than Canada, China and the US. European part of Pan-Slavia, that's how I'm calling it now, would be 10 times the size of France, which would now be the second largest country on the continent. The Asian part would also be the largest territory on that continent, thanks entirely to Russia. Number of people living in Pan-Slavia would reach 278 million, putting it behind the US, India and China, but ahead of Indonesia and Brazil. The European part of Pan-Slavia would house some 242 million citizens or 87% of the total. This would make it the most populated territory in Europe, having almost three times the population of Germany. On the other hand, only 35 million people would live in Asia, making it one of the least densely populated places on Earth. Only 2.7 people per square kilometer, resembling Australia or Mongolia. This country country would face a serious problem though, as almost every one of these 13 states has seen drastic population declines since the beginning of the famous 90s thanks to the fall of communism and civil wars. In 1991, these countries put together had over 296 million people which was more than the US. For example, Ukraine lost over 9 million people or 19% of its population. Same as Bulgaria and Serbia and Croatia and buzz, while on the other hand, Czechia and Slovakia actually gained a couple percent. The toughest part by far was determining the ethnic structure of the country. After an exhausting couple of hours, I came up with these numbers. As expected, Russians would be the largest ethnic group with over 40% of the population or around 120 million people. Then come the Ukrainians, Poles, Czechs, Belarusians, Serbs and so on. The interesting part is that there are over 360 60 million Slavs in the world, meaning that over 25% of them live outside of our hypothetical state. Also, religion was a tough nut to crack, since people tend to boycott censuses. So here are the results. 38% of people would adhere to Orthodox Christianity, 17% to Catholicism, plus another 5% of other forms of Christianity, making a total of 60%. There would also be a relatively small community of Muslims, and most of the rest would be atheists or agnostics. With these numbers, Pan-Slavia would be a country with the most orthodox Christians in the world. Additionally, it would be the sixth most populous Catholic country. The toughest part is over, so you can relax. Let's choose our capital city. Sure, it's simple to say Moscow plus would you really have a choice? A lot of Western Slavs don't have the friendliest relationships with Russia. And let's not even talk about Ukraine, since we already did. Link in the top left. The most logical solution for me would still be Moscow, not only as the biggest city in terms of population, economy and influence, but also strategy. Moscow is placed deep in the middle of Russia, especially Pan-Slavia, making it really hard to conquer. Trust me, many have tried. Moscow metro area houses around 17 million people, making it one of the largest cities in the world. The second largest city would be St. Petersburg, then come Kiev, Warsaw, it's a long list. Actually, 26 cities would have populations of over a million. 15 in Russia, 5 in Ukraine and 1 for Poland, Czechia, Serbia, Belarus, Bulgaria and Croatia each. And with this over, you know what time it is. 
GDP! Pan-Slavia would be launched to the top of the leaderboard here. With its GDP of 3.1 trillion dollars, Slavs would have the fifth richest state in the world. They would be in front of powers such as France, Great Britain and India. Only USA, China, Japan and Germany would have bigger GDPs. But India is quickly catching up, so step on it guys. In many unifications of this scale, an important problem arises – income inequality. GDP per capita would be around $11,000 which is around the world's average same as Brazil, Mexico or Turkey. But there's Ukraine and poorer parts of Russia with less than 2k per capita. Most of the Balkans wouldn't be even close to 11k. Russia would be in the middle while Croatia, Slovenia and these three would be far above the average. Take monthly wages for example. Ukraine at only 200 euros per month. Russia, Belarus and most of the Balkans at around 400. Well these are much better off. So we need a lot of investments here to close the gap. It is really tough to say where the economy would move on from here, but on the bright side they would have a lot at their disposal. From endless natural resources to warm seaports, which as we've already mentioned, Russia desperately needs in order to establish dominance in the region. There's also an issue of the Balkans being cut off from the rest, which leads us to military and diplomacy. Depending on sources, Pan-Slavia would have between 1.3 and 1.5 million active troops, making its army the fourth largest or the third or the second, I'm sorry the sources are weird. They'd also maybe have the third largest budget, maybe. You know what, let's move on. Diplomacy time and more problems. Bulgaria, Croatia, Slovenia, Poland, Czechia and Slovakia are all EU members. All the others also want to join the organization, except for you know who? Oh, and Belarus, yeah, don't forget Belarus. Now, Russia, as you may already know, is not a fan of the EU, and Belarus has Rus in their name, so you get where I'm going with this. To add insult to injury, everyone except these two in Serbia are or want to join NATO, another organization that doesn't consider Russia to be its greatest partner. So, this part of Pan Slavia would now be surrounded by NATO. Plus, with all that, Crimea going on. Western Slavs and Ukraine would never want this to happen. Yeah, seems even more impossible now. Even if united, this would naturally cause insane amount of tensions between Moscow and Washington. This, let's be honest, even bigger Russia would scare the West even more. But on the bright side, Pan Slavia would now have much greater influence on the world stage, especially with new warm seaports, more manpower and even more resources affirming itself as the new world superpower. So what do you think? Is it possible or not? I mean, of course it's not, but I have to engage the community somehow. Please consider subscribing, sharing and liking the video, leave a comment down below, follow me on Instagram and donate to my Patreon so that I don't have to drink only water when I'm filming these. Pozdrav!